Hello everybody and welcome to this video on interest rate swaps which is a part of the series on OTC derivatives videos of which I've been uploading because there's a large amount of OTC derivative news that is coming up in the light of the SVB scandal and of course the balance sheet problems in other banks in US and Europe. Hi, I'm learning partner Sushila Hari Harani. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle and OTC derivatives, do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide research rich content on these topics. Hit that notification button because I upload shots as well as full length videos on these topics. Okay, grab that filter coffee if you want so that you're able to get your head cleared up before seeing this video. A swap is a derivative instrument. It's an OTC derivative instrument over the counter derivatives. It's not an exchange traded product. Like every other derivative instrument, it is based on an underlying asset. The underlying asset could be interest rates, currencies, or even equities and other financial assets. Swaps have these following features. There is a principal amount attached to every swap. This is also called as a notional amount and the contract value. But the principal amount never gets exchanged, either at the time of the swap starting or at the time of swap maturity. Then what is the use of this principal amount? The principal amount is used to calculate all the cash flows related to the swap. So therefore, a swap is an exchange of cash flows. And each side of a swap trade is called as a leg. So in an interest rate swap, for example, you can have a fixed rate leg with the counterparty having the floating rate leg. It's very important to be able to identify these legs. The swap also is very clear about mentioning the payment frequency. Payment frequency means how often the cash flows that are associated with the swap will be exchanged whether it will be quarterly, whether it will be semi-annually or like a currency swap, whether it will be annually, all that has to be clearly mentioned. Where will it be mentioned? It will be mentioned in the contract between the two counterparties for the swap. Okay, so swap has to be very clear about how is the exchange of the cash flows going to take place. Remember, there is no exchange of principal amount, neither at the time of drawdown nor at the time of maturity. So then what is the only support that the counterparties have, collateral that the counterparties have, is these cash flows, okay, apart from all the margins that are otherwise to be maintained. Swaps are not entered into between buyer and seller. They are entered into between two counterparties, the receiver and the payer. Therefore, in most cases, the payments are netted between the two counterparties. If it is called as a payer in an interest rate swap, it means they are paying the interest rate which is fixed in nature. And if they are receiving, it is called as a receiver of fixed interest rate. Similarly, it will change in the case of currencies, etc. So in the case of interest rate swaps, payer refers to the entity that is paying fixed interest. Receiver refers to the counterparty that is receiving the fixed interest. Okay. Swaps therefore has four essential features. There's an underlying instrument, therefore they have currency swaps as well as interest rate swaps. There is a principal amount also called as a notional amount which never gets exchanged. There's an exchange only of periodic cash flows either monthly or quarterly or semi-annually. These are netted payments. Who nets them out? The counterparties net them out. If there's a swap dealer, so a swap dealer nets out the payments. The payments are always netted so as to facilitate ease of exchange of cash flows. The fourth feature is that the swap always has two counterparties, receiver and payer, not buyer and seller. Let's take an example of an interest rate swap where there's a company called AAA. AAA Company Limited wants to take, has taken a loan of $5 million. If it takes the loan at a fixed interest rate, the bank will charge it 7%. If it takes it on a floating interest rate, the bank charges it SOFR, that is a secured overnight financing rate, which is the USD interest rate, which has replaced the LIBOR since the past couple of years. There is a company called BB Company Limited, which also has taken a loan of $5 billion dollars it is the bank which is given it a loan is charging it a fixed interest rate of 10% and a floating interest rate of 
SOFR plus 100 BPS. 100 BPS means 100 basis points, also called as 1 percentage. Okay. These are the loans that the company has taken from their respective banks. So, AAA Limited has taken from Alpha Bank a loan of $5 million at a fixed interest rate of 7%. BB Limited has taken a loan from Beta Bank at a rate of so far plus 1%. It is very important to understand that this is not the swap. These are two separate transactions which the companies have taken with their respective banks. But somewhere during the course of the loan, AAA Limited wants to change the terms of its loan from a fixed interest rate to a floating interest rate. Similarly, BB Limited wants to change the loan amount, uh, the loan terms of the loan from a floating interest rate to fixed interest rate. So you understand what's happening. Though AAA has taken a fixed interest rate loan from Alpha Limited Bank, it wants to change the terms of that loan from fixed to floating. Maybe it feels that interest rates are likely to go down in the future and therefore it wants to convert from fixed to floating and take advantage of declining interest rates. Similarly, contrary to other the opinion of, double, of AAA Limited, Double B Limited, believe that interest rates are going to go up and therefore instead of suffering from every hike in interest rates it wants to change the terms of its con uh, loan from floating to fixed okay now this is still not the swap because they don't know each other yet who comes into the picture the swap dealer comes into the picture and he's smiling with glee and happiness because here is where he's going to make all the commissions and brokerages aaa limited enters into a interest rate swap with the counterparty where AAA Limited pays the swap dealer so far that is the secured overnight financing rate and receives from the swap dealer 8%. This is called as the fixed leg of the swap. Okay. The BB Limited pays 8.5% to the swap dealer. Why does BB Limited pay 8.5%? If BB Limited took a fixed rate loan from its bank, it will be charged 10%, which is not going to, it's not willing to pay. Therefore, it pays something which is less than 10%. And in return, it receives from the swap dealer so far. Okay? As I already mentioned, who is paying fixed interest rate? BB Limited. Therefore, BB Limited is called as the payer. Who is receiving the fixed interest rate? AAA Limited. Therefore, AAA Limited is the receiver of the fixed interest rate. All right. The floating interest rate, which is exchanged on the basis of SOFR, is called as the floating leg. What is the role of the swap dealer over here? The role of the swap dealer is very clear. One is to make these two counterparties conclude the swap. Second is to ensure that the quarterly or uh, monthly, uh, sorry, quarterly or semi-annually uh, payment of cash flows takes place on the scheduled date. Okay. So all that will be handled by the swap dealer. The swap dealer plays a very, very important role over here because they have to calculate all the uh, payments that have to be made between the two counterparties on the scheduled dates. What are the benefits of the swap? Is it really beneficial? Let us see for AAA Limited. AAA Limited pays Alpha Bank 7%. It receives 8% from the swap dealer. It pays so far to the dealer. So therefore, it's really beneficial to AAA Limited because it's receiving more than what it is paying, right? So it's 100 basis points clear benefit to Alpha uh, Bank because they have actually going to have a cash flow from there uh, to AAA Limited. Benefits to BB Limited. BB Limited pays Beta Bank so far plus 100 basis points. They receive so far from the swap dealer. Okay, right? 
and they pay 8.5% to the dealer. If they were to pay to Beta Bank, they would have to pay almost 10%, almost 150 basis points difference. And that gets calculated by the 100 basis points difference. 50 basis points goes off from there. And this is the benefit to BB Limited. Finally, is it beneficial to the swap dealer? Of course, this is what investment banking is all about. Investment banking is all about taking opportunities, grabbing opportunities, making money on every leg of every transaction. The swap dealer receives 50 basis points for every leg of the cash flows. Not one time, every leg of the cash flow. Sometimes it may be that uh, AAA has to pay, sometimes it may be that BB has to pay, but it is always the case that they receive 50 basis points for every leg of the cash flow. If you like such content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep learning and keep growing. Thank you.